So hi everyone, it's um, four o'clock now, so I think we'll make a sort of tentative start. So this webinar today has been co-hosted by our Toto Platinum partners, uh, LearnChamp. And today, Victoria and Alexander will be talking to us about the authoring tool ADAPT, and they'll be showing you how to easily publish new e-learning content to your LMS. Um, if you have any questions today, feel free to post them into the chat. We'll be also be recording this session, so it'll be available on demand after the webinar. So thanks very much, and over to you, Victoria and Alexander. Thank you so much, Matt. Hi, everyone. This is Victoria speaking from, from the LearnChamp. Um, so you have a picture uh, who is talking to you today. Uh, it's, uh, it's me. I'm Victoria. Uh, I'm, the, uh, I'm a marketing executive at uh, LearnChamp. And with me today is Alexander. Hello. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I'm a developer at LearnChamp. And in the demo, you'll see later, it's basically done by me and a few colleagues. So yes. you speak to the source. <laughs> yes, so what uh, we want to Thanks. show you today is uh, a, a, a tool we've built um, that allows um, a really nice and easy way to publish contents you've created within Adapt directly into your Totra instance. Uh, and uh, before we're going to jump into that and before uh, Alexander gets a chance to tell you all about the technical details and, and shows you how, uh, how the publishing tool works uh, in depth, I just uh, in wanted depth, to really I quickly wanted to um, tell you a little bit about LearnChamp, what we do, why uh, we've been working with uh, ADAPT and Totra in, in, such, uh, in such depth and um, what we understand in regards to uh, um, learning experiences learning and also a great experience for content creators and uh, site administrators who have to uh, take the content that was built and upload that into the LMS and make it available to to all your learners across your organization. Yeah, so that's what we're going to yeah, focus so on today. Yeah. And if you have any questions during, during our session, don't hesitate to um, um, post them directly into the chat. And uh, if I or if we see them, um, we'll try to answer them right away. But um, if not, we're going to um, certainly touch on them at the end of, of our session. So yeah, uh, that's like uh, for the short introduction. And uh, Sorry, I forgot, forgot one thing, one uh, really important thing. Uh, thank you, Matt, also for uh, inviting us today to uh, to show uh, the new functionality we've built and for setting up the webinar. <laughs> okay, so in regards to a quick introduction, and I don't want to take too long on that because I'm sure you uh, are more eager to see uh, the what we do with Adapt and how you can really easily publish uh, courses directly into your uh, LMS. So um, uh, on that note, is a really quick introduction uh, to uh, LearnChamp. So what we want to help is, uh, and what we want to uh, help people understand is that everyone who wants to impart a knowledge in their organization must make it their business to inspire people to find uh, new things and to learn new things in a creative way. For this reason, uh, we've developed a, an approach um, which we named exactly as learners may perceive it. It's the amazing learning experience, uh, like the one you see floating around right now. I hope that there is not too much lagging in, in the session, but I think you get the picture because uh, what we aim for is really fluid because uh, it depends really on the organization and on the learner itself and on the target group on what an amazing learning experience is. An amazing learning experience could be an awesome learning platform that represents your brand in the best possible way and makes it really easy for your learners to access learning content. Um, but it also could be a cool, uh, cool interactive video that is uh, in, uh, embedded in uh, a responsive e-learning course. So your learners can um, check out that video um, wherever they are. So as a learning 
uh, as a digital learning agency, we impl implement solution around either bes bespoke e-learning content, which can be, uh, as I said, like uh, uh, responsive e-learning content, interactive videos, uh, gamification elements and stuff like that. Um, but also we focus on the technology part behind it all. And regards to that, we are really happy that we are an, um, Totra Platinum uh, implementation partner, which allows us to implement uh, technology solutions that really um, reflect the, the organization we work with uh, in the best possible way. And as you can derive from our claim, it is our main goal to create a learning experience that is most beneficial to learners. And uh, with ADAPT and Totra, we kind of found like a match made in heaven to do so. Um, because uh, with the two tools and with the new functionality we, we created, we are able to create that uh, amazing learning experience and that seamless uh, user experience for both parties, the learners itself and the content creators and the site admins behind it all. So that uh, the learning contents are easy to find and easy to access for the learners, but also that it's that the lives for content creators and site admins get get way easier to have like um, less um, operational workload for them. Um, before we gonna focus on the content creators and the site admins, I want to take a quick look at the learner side, um, and uh, when, and I want to show you a couple of best practices on what we did with Adapt and how contents could look like and um, what you would be able to. Uh, build within ADAPT. Okay, so let's jump right into it. And um, first I want to show you, uh, as I said, a couple of um, best practices. And what I want to start with is a project we did uh, with a client that is based in Vienna. And I'm showing you a screenshot before because um, they already have both solutions in place. So uh, Chroma has implemented a, a learning management system, uh, Totra, of course. Um, and uh, you can see here that what we did is um, we matched the user interface uh, cl very closely to, to, do, to their uh, corporate design so that the um, e uh, that the e-learning platform um, reflects their brand in the, in the best possible way because um, they are in the business of uh, aesthetic um, medicine and they want their learning environment to reflect that um, aesthetics. Um, and what they did is they uh, used uh, Totra as a, as a platform and seamlessly integrated the uh, learning uh, contents into the platform. So um, the user does not even have to uh, jump into another window of their browser or whatever, the, the content opens directly in itself. Um, and you have different modules you can go through and the, and the whole platform is based on user personas. Uh, in that case, it, the user personas represent a patient and you can go through each um, for each course uh, um, via the uh, um, via the patient's uh, perspective. Uh, yeah, so uh, now let me jump into uh, the content itself. Just Okay, so now you should see my, my screen there uh, with, the, with the content itself. And that's uh, the, the, the part that the learner sees when he jumps uh, off, to the, off from the platform directly into the course. Unfortunately, we can uh, go into their portal because um, you know that's uh, client confidential. Um, but I have a course here that um, uh, gives you an, a hinge on what the content would look like. Uh, for ADAPT, we have the same kind of flexibility that we have within Totra in regards to 
uh, look and feel because we can uh, change the whole color palette. We can upload your, um, your, your fonts and make the contents really look like um, your, your brand itself. Um, and we can do a lot of different things and uh, how different they could be. I, I will show you in the different, um, in the different uh, examples I brought to you today. Uh, so yeah, let's jump right into. Um, we are looking at the adapt contents uh, from a desktop point of view right now. So um, everything you see here is um, uh, built into uh, a, a maximum of two sections, like the left and the right, because that's the um, that's the important part of res uh, of responsive e-learning that you have a maximum of two components, as we say, next to each other. Um, in order to keep the, the responsive, responsive character, because when I switch, oh, sorry, different. Uh, when I switch to, to a mobile view, and I'll um, just go here from, uh, for the mobile phone, then you can see all the text that was uh, next to each other now falls underneath each other. And the real uh, advantage here is that you don't have to create the e-learning like in three different ways. If you then, then the first version is for desktop and the second is for mobile, um, the the content really adjusts to the screen size you you choose. Uh, and uh, so you can see properly. I'll uh, switch back to the desktop view. So what you can do is uh, add text, of course, but you also have like image sliders that are uh, that you can incorporate. Um, you can add uh, different videos. You have a um, progress bar up there that uh, gives the learner uh, an indication on how far the, he is within the content, which is really important in, from a user experience point of view so the learner doesn't get lost uh, in, within the courses. Um, another example I brought is from uh, one of our clients, uh, uh, Swiss-based NGO uh, that uh, is um, that's mis uh, whose mission is to um, to reinvent the training on rheumatology and give uh, valid information to uh, doctors, patients, uh, and healthcare workers on on that topic. So. Uh, here, the, the courses are based on um, uh, ADAPT again. Um, what we see here is that we have a little bit more of elements uh, uh, in the menu and also here another, um, another mean to give the, the learner an, an overview on where in the course he, he is, is currently at and how much content he has to review within, um, within this session. Um, the, the, the course page navigation over here is something we've developed uh, with, with, with our developers and, and our clients because um, that's a requirement we had quite often, often in order, as I mentioned, to give the, the learner a good overview on uh, where he is in the course. Um, you can add different kind of, kind of functionality into ADAPT, like small animations that spice up the course a little bit, as well as videos you can add to your courses because that uh, video is such a huge part in the meantime. What we always say is um, it's really important to use a transcript within your um, contents when you use a video because um, as the, the contents are responsive and can be um, done from anywhere, um, maybe your, your learner doesn't have like a, a your, his headset with him and can't use the, the audio so that the information on the audio doesn't get lost, just put it into the transcript uh, in here and um, everything, the learner has everything he needs. Um, what you see here uh, is, of course, there are different types of questions in there. And um, the important part as well is that um, here, because you see over here, we are on the first bubble of the course and uh, I can't keep scrolling because um, you can like um, uh, guide the learner through the course and make him stop as, at a certain point because that question here is so important um, that, he, that we want 
uh, that the learner really uh, submits the, the questions on, 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 on that course so he can go further. And if he, he or she answers it right, uh, he can go to the next chapter. Yeah, so that's for that. And uh, another course we did, as you see here, the navigation again is uh, on uh, the topic uh, uh, Industry 4.0. You see a completely different uh, look and feel of the, the, the content. And I think that's the really beautiful part of, uh, of it, that is that it's so flexible and you can do so much with it and have uh, a really nice uh, learning experience for, for your employees and your learners there. Um, yeah, so um, we have here another uh, navigation element. So that's uh, the one part of the uh, of, of, uh, course. Um, next to video, we can also add uh, audio functionality. We have um, an accordion that is everyone, everyone is quite used to from um, their search behavior or behavior on the internet already, um, which is also every time a really nice touch for um, your e-learning content. Yeah, so uh, that's for that. We have a video again. So you see there are uh, a lot of uh, different functionality you can use in Adapt. And um, for example, you have like an interaction element that makes it uh, more um, more appealing to the learner to go through the, uh, the different steps of uh, the production process and uh, really gives him an insight on what's what's important uh, within the uh, within that process yes so I'll just quickly check if you have any questions so far doesn't look like it or Matt did I oversee any anything because then I will go back to that. Uh, no, it looks like no one's asked any questions so far, but feel free to ask questions in the chat and then um, we'll come back to you. Yes, exactly. So if you have any questions or uh, if you want, if you want uh, me to jump into a, a specific part of the course that you are really eager to see, then uh, just let me know. So uh, one last example I, um, I brought today is uh, a really specific uh, adapt uh, content that is highly customized, but I, I wanted to show it to you because um, you can see quite quite clearly on uh, what is what is possible and that uh, adapt offers us uh, in comparison to a lot of other um, offering tools the the, the freedom to um, to come up with new functionality to create new new components. Um, for things that um, you also see as, a, as an important part for your learners or that you want to um, um, replicate in, into your courses. Yes, so uh, we have here like a, a click, clickable graphic that lets, uh, let guides us through, um, through uh, the, uh, the behavior or the, the needs of um, someone who wants to buy uh, a new um, cologne. Um, I'm sorry, the course is in, in, in German, so if you have any questions on what, what it's, uh, it's saying, let me know as well. Um, the client here was like um, a, a store that uh, uh, sells colognes as well to their, to their clients. And uh, what the client wanted to, to do is uh, they wanted to train to their um, staff on how to approach people that, uh, that want to buy a new, a new perfume and what to keep in mind when doing so. So um, I mean, and I, I understand that, I, that it sounds a bit um, confusing if someone is, uh, is going to be trained on how to sell a perfume, why would you do that uh, digitally? Because isn't it something you need to smell? Um, but for that part, we really wanted to focus on, on, the, on the user persona, on the client again, and, uh, and show the, uh, and train the staff here on what to keep in mind when talking to the people. And that's something um, that can be um, put into e-learning e content quite nicely, as well as um, what, to, what, what 
uh, what types of perfumes are out there and how to combine them with the different personalities of the user personas. Yeah, so that again is, uh, is, an, is a component that um, puts the, the learner in, in a kind of interactive state so he really has to interact with, with the courses there itself. Um, what we do throughout uh, most of our e-learning courses is um, put like small tips here and there for the learner to um, to find so he has some additional information but um, we usually put those uh, into the courses if we if that's not something that the learners must know but rather than it's good for him to know. Um, I think everyone who's been, who has been working with uh, e-learning contents knows uh, flippable cards. Um, and here again, we have the, um, the interaction component on um, what the, the staff member could ask uh, herself in, in that matter on how to sell the, uh, the perfumes in the best possible way. Yeah, so, and then uh, we can see that it's important that, the, that in order to sell perfumes, it needs three different parts either like what kind of uh, smell do the person like, what types are they, and what brands to, do they appeal to. Yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, uh, those were the, the, the best practices I wanted to show you in order for you to get an understanding on uh, why uh, ADAPT is such a cool offering tool and why we've been working it, with it uh, so intensively over the last uh, couple of years. Uh, and um, let me just quickly jump in back into my presentation there. So just um, a question that came in from mm -hmm. David, which Alexander's actually answered now, but just for the rest of the webinar, David was asking that um, multiple choice questions posted in the ADAPT content. Is this linked to the Toto platform? For example, is the Toto LMS able to report on the learners' answers and the scores? And Alexander, you've answered. I don't know if you want to say it out loud for everyone else. For example, Alexander said that. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm here. Uh, yes. Um, the there's a plugin that handles the connection between Adapt and the LMS. Um, that um, stores the answers and sends them to the LMS as well as the score the user has achieved in the courses so yeah that's totally possible thanks alexander and then uh, Tim was asking a different question other than multiple choice do we have any other question components which is true false multiple response drag and drop multiple response? there's multiple um question components um, there's multiple choice, uh, single choice is actually, actually multiple choice as well, but just with one possible answer. Um, there is, I think, true false. Um, there is um, a public drag and drop component that is not adept core, but um, publicly available from the community. I think fill in the blanks is core as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and there are several other, so there's many. And just to say as well, if, if anyone wants to experiment with ADAPT, if you go into any of the academy courses in the Totoro community, we also use the ADAPT authoring tool. So lots of our course content is using ADAPT. So play around with those um, and you'll see the types of things that are possible as well as um, what's being shown today. Another question we have from Nick Hill. To what extent can we synchronize voiceover with on-screen text in ADAPT? Also, is it possible to add time subtitles to video within, videos within ADAPT? Yeah, well, so that's um, the major um, different, difference between uh, ADAPT contents and, uh, for example, storyline contents. I think you, you are quite aware of, of, of those because um, um, in, in difference to slide-based contents where you have a timeline, uh, you don't have a timeline in, in, in ADAPT because you have the, the scrolling design of the content. So um, there is no such thing as voiceover because um, the, in order to have an audio, then, um, you need an interaction uh, with the learner. 
um, so that we have a different, uh, we have an audio component as well that is just like um, a button that the, that the learner can, can press and you have uh, an, an additional audio there, um, as well as the, the media components with the different audio types. But all of those require an, an action from, from the learner. Um, so it's quite different to, to what you're used to when you're creating um, contents in Storyline. And we are slide-based contents and we, we, are, we are doing quite a few of them. Um, what our um, experience was in regards to that is um, in, in certain cases it's really, really nice and really good to have that voiceover of the e-learning courses, but depending on your target group, um, some people might find it um, a bit interrupting. Um, so we reduced um, the voiceovers in, in the contents um, majorly over the last couple of, of, of years because, um, or last couple of, I don't know, two to three years, because um, when you look at your um, private um, consumer behavior or information consumption behavior, um, when you open a tab in, into, in, in your browser and uh, there is a music starting or an audio starting without you um, want, want that audio to start, you get quite a bit frustrated and you want to turn it off immediately. So that's why we put like the voiceovers into uh, a really specific format. And yeah, so um, in order to cut myself short, um, no, you don't have the, the voiceover functionality like you have in with slide-based uh, courses because, as I mentioned before, you need the, the learner to interact with, with, with that component, so to say. Okay, just a quick question from Christopher. He's asking, um, so you're showing some really nice uh, interactive content there. Um, what's the name of the component for the circle um, that you've just shown, if you know that? Um, Synthil suggests it's possibly hot graphic. Uh, no, it's not a hot graphic. Uh, we've uh, we've developed that that one component um, specifically for for that client. Uh, I don't I don't know the name, Alex. Do you know? It's called SVG Wrapper. Yeah, thank you. Because it basically animates an SVG image, uh, and this component is actually published as of, I don't know when we published it. So if someone is already using Adapt, they can use it already. They can find it on the plugin browser. Okay, great. Thank you, I, I wasn't, wasn't sure. So it's the SVG rep and it's available in the Adapt community, right? Just, just to say from my part as well, I think it looks really nice and we're definitely gonna steal that for our teacher academy. <laughs> <laughs> great. Uh, okay. Uh, do we have any other questions on the Adapt uh, content so far? No more questions at the moment. Okay, great. So uh, I'll just jump back into uh, our slides. Um, so yeah, we uh, covered the learner part and uh, how a, a great learning experience uh, would be beneficial for them and how we, we at LearnChamp um, do so uh, when we are creating um, appealing learning contents, but um, the learner side is is, is one one part. Um, what we want to do in order to really create the amazing learner ex learning experience is um, to make that available to the content creators and side admins as well. So that's why we um, kept thinking that um, sorry, sorry. Um, that we we quite often saw that L&D teams lose so much time uh, when creating an e-learning course and then have to download that from, from your offering tool and then um, upload it again in, into the offering tool. And then sometimes you um, publish it in the wrong version of, of the SCORM format and so on and so forth. So it, it, tag, it takes quite, quite some time. And we were thinking um, that, that could and we could do better and um, in addition to to that like cumbersome cumbersome process it's also quite an, an a security gap because 
um, you have to have uh, different permission controls and uh, different permission settings. And also when you, um, for example, the content creator um, uh, downloads the, this form file in, in the offering tool and then has to send it via, I don't know, whatever, um, maybe sometimes it isn't, it isn't even like an IT uh, department approved tool that, uh, that, that the um, content files get uh, transported to, to, the, to the person who has to upload them. So uh, we really wanted to make that process easier. And um, what we did is we took a look at um, both the tools we, we had in place, so Adapt and, and Totra, and Within Adapt, it's as we saw, it's uh, we can create and, and manage content. We also can um, collaborate and review that content um, within the, the different uh, different offers that are in the, in the uh, in the offering tool. And what uh, Alex and and the development team at LearnChamp come up with was um, that you are now able to select and publish a course. Uh, within ADAPT and directly publish it to your total course activity. And how to do so, um, that's uh, the part where um, part Alex two. comes in. Uh, and Alex. I will hand over and to you, Alex, now, uh, because I think everyone is quite, <laughs> quite excited to see how that, was, uh, how that works. Thank you. Yeah, let me just share my screen. and hope it's the right one. So I think you can see my Totra now. Yes. Okay, good. So just to see that this course is totally empty. So um, I've already logged into the Adept authoring tool. Um, and this is basically the um, dashboard when you're logged in. And um, I won't show you how to create a course right now. I'll just show you the tool, how we made it easier to publish. Um, normally to publish a course, um, you would open the course and then would here publish course and click it. And that can, depending on the size of the course and all the assets used, take up to, I don't know, two minutes because some customers have really, really huge videos in there. And afterwards, you would have to um, upload this zip file to the LMS. And that can take another two or three minutes or so. And we thought, why not make it a bit easier? And we implemented um, our nice tool. We can just say, I'd like to directly publish to the LMS. And here in the first step, we get an overview of all the available LMS that we could publish to. And if I just noticed, oh, the LMS I want to publish to isn't there, I can jump to the settings and add a new one or just edit an old one that is outdated or something. I've already added the one we're using today, so I don't have to do this. Um, in order to make this work, you have to install a plugin in Totra. Um, the installation is really simple. It's just copying a, a file into Totra, basically. And then you have to enable web services in Totra where there is a, um, short instructions list on how to do that and then you're done. And afterwards you can just use the feature and I will um, publish to a digital learning academy. Um, there's the URL of the service we are trying to use. And as soon as I select the LMS, I get an overview of available courses in the LMS that I am allowed to publish to. And if, I'm, if, if the list is too long to be able to find the correct course, I can just search for the 
right category, which makes it really easy to find the right one. And I think I'm going to publish to the demo, yeah, to the demo course. And as soon as I've selected the course I want to publish to, I get another overview of um, what sections are there available in the course. And I will just publish to the SCORM section. And then I get to the last pop-up where I actually confirm all my settings. So I want to publish to this LMS. Um, the course name is demo and I want to publish in the section SCORM. And that's just, let's name it test for test's sake. And if I publish, Again, depending on how big the course is, it can take up to, I don't know, I tried it with a two gigabyte course and it took like 20 seconds last time. So it's much faster than downloading and uploading again. And I actually got a link here that will bring me directly to the course and there is the SCORM package. And what Alex didn't so tell you so far is that uh, you're kind of getting a sneak peek uh, from for our new Digital Learning Academy right here. Um, it's uh, a Totra instance we uh, created uh, uh, in, in order to set up a, an academy for L&D professionals who want to uh, uh, get further education on how to create um, the best possible uh, digital learning content. And uh, we wanted to show you here that um, what we also uh, can do with uh, with Totra and make it um, hopefully look uh, nice as we think it, it does. Yes, so sorry, Alex. And using this LMS was faster than installing a new one, actually, <laughs> because installing the plugin was faster. Uh, yes, and um, as long as we've used the right um, plugins in the ADAPT course, we can start the, the SCORM package now because we need an extra plugin for, for SCORM. Uh, I don't know if I actually used it, so yeah. Um, another really useful... Sorry, yeah? uh, Sorry. there is one, one question. Uh, if the course is updated in the depth, for example, uh, like the picture is changed, and do we need to republish uh, the course to update it in Tokyo again? I was actually about to show this. Great. Ah, okay. um, yes, we, we actually have to um, do this, but Again, um, we don't have to um, publish via this um, dark publish and stuff. Um, we have an extra page that shows us all the already published courses. And there we can just search for the one that um, we just uploaded. And if we um, want to update the course, we just click again on the um, I don't know what's it called in English, <laughs> the, the oh. settings <laughs> thing, and just click on republish and it will be republished to this LMS and this course. So if we actually um, updated one course, but only wanted to update in one LMS and not all five it has been published to because of reasons, I don't know, um, we can just select this specific one and say republish and it will get republished. Mm -hmm. And we can also um, here say edit and it will directly jump into the course as if I've ed uh, opened it from the dashboard and yeah. Okay, so another two questions uh, was um, if um, the course was published uh, correctly and um, if there are quite certain Totra settings are they uh, if they are standard settings are they then updated um, with the publishing tool as well or do I manually set uh, the settings uh, uh, after publishing it from the adapt instance 
Uh, right now, we have to edit them manually. Mm -hmm. We've implemented it so that um, it uses the default settings we use for our customers most of mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. um, but we are planning on um, implementing more settings. Mm -hmm. But um, for, um, for our use cases right now, it was more than enough. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if we republish the course, all these settings will be um, the same as before. So mm -hmm. it's actually not, um, we don't change the settings of the core, of the scoring package, but mm -hmm. only the scoring package itself. Mm -hmm. And all the other settings will remain as they were. Okay, and uh, if that's another question, when, this, when the course is republished, uh, uh, what happens to the course completion or the the, um, the people who already done the the course? Do they have to do the Do they have to retake the course, or uh, is it just uh, like a new version and the course completion of um, already um, completed courses are still stored? I think everything is stored as before. You would have to. Um, manually reset the progress of the users in this activity, I think. Okay. Great. Because that's, um, republishing is basically just as if you uh, opened the settings, deleted the current SCORM file and uploaded a new one. And um, I think everything else would still be the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Uh, and David, uh, to David, answer your uh, question on uh, how to find yeah, information on the publishing plugin, plugin or how to get access. Um, so uh, our team and the team, uh, and the Totro team is currently working on um, to, uh, to um, create the release notes uh, and to make the publishing tool available for the, the Totro community. So uh, just keep an eye out and um, it will be available in the next uh, couple of weeks. Okay, uh, Alex, anything else you wanted uh, to, Alex, show? to show? Uh, I don't think so. I think that was it. Thank okay, you. great. Uh, so great. yeah, do you have any, any other questions? Okay, there's another one. Uh, how to track completion of courses which only have overview slides and no quizzes. So um, you can um, connect uh, the course completion to, um, to, the, um, to the activity of people uh, opening a course and okay, if they have opened the course and, uh, the, and looked at the, the overview slide or like have, if, if there are any clickable elements on the, on the course, um, if they have clicked all the elements on the course and then the, the course uh, is completed, but that's something um, you have to set within the, within the offering tool. Uh, so, yeah, uh, another question about the Digital Learning Academy. Yes, it will be available in, uh, in the near future as well. Uh, if you want to, I can put you on the, um, the mailing list of, uh, of our beta users so you have uh, um, a first, first access, so to say. Okay, uh, another question uh, is how to install the, the ADAPT uh, dashboard or the ADAPT offering tool. Um, so uh, ADAPT is a server-based offering tool that uh, then can be accessed via the, the browser. And Alex, correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm saying anything, <laughs> anything that that's wrong. Um, 
So what you need um, is uh, so an, you need an, a server where you can put it uh, or where you can put the, the offering tool and then uh, just uh, set it up according to the um, to the guidelines within the ADAPT community. There is extensive um, extensive documentation on uh, uh, the ADAPT website as well. And if you need any, any help in setting up the, the offering tool, or if you want to, uh, if you want uh, us to help you set up uh, the, the offering tool or uh, need any, any hosting um, in that regard, um, we are always happy to help out uh, here as well. Um, okay, so there's a question about creating course structure. Um, uh, yes, so uh, in, in ADAPT, uh, let me just quickly check if I have a course here that could show you how that's, uh, that's, that's done. Uh, um, because um, within ADAPT, you have the, the possibility to, uh, to create uh, different, uh, different chapters within a module. Uh, and I'll just quickly check if I have a... Yeah, okay. So I just quickly okay. share my so screen I again. I quickly share my screen again. Um, Alex, can you stop sharing yours so I can <laughs> start sharing mine? <laughs> start sharing mine. Should actually work ah. regardless, but here you go. Oh, sorry, thank you. No problem. Okay, so uh, you should oh. see a course about uh, pommes frites or uh, in, in English fries, and that's a course we did with uh, Mc, McDonald's, and uh, they wanted to train their, um, their restaurant. Uh, oh, you're not seeing anything, oh. I guess. But now, okay. So uh, they wanted to train so their employees on the different stations within the restaurant. And uh, one important part in at McDonald's is, of course, their fries. Uh, and uh, the fries have, like, in order to get all the information, you have different um, chapters. For example, quality and, and where the potatoes come from and how to, uh, how then, um, prepare the, the, the fries within the restaurants, what's important about the, uh, 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 the uh, accusator and the frying pan. And then you have uh, over here like a, a, a quiz or an assessment uh, at the end of the course. So um, it is uh, uh, possible to uh, create a course structure with, within ADAPT in order for um, for the learner to have like different parts of the information different within different chapters, within different modules, without having to have like uh, a single course for each topic, because in uh, together they, they it's all the information on on fries, but within that information pool, it's good to structure and that information in in different categories, because with for the scrolling design, it's important to um, to split the information up at a certain point because um, you can't you can't have endless uh, scrolling meters so to say um, but at some point the the learner gets tired and gets lost uh, so it's always a good idea to split it up and yeah so a course structure is possible and I hope that that answered your question. Okay. <clears throat> okay, that's great. Thank you very much, uh, Beth. I think, I don't know if there's any more questions coming in. I think that's it. So th thank you both very much today for sharing ADAPT. And I've picked up another tip for that SVG com wrapper component as well. <laughs> great. So if you have any final remarks that you'd like to say. Uh, well, I think uh, we covered a lot of it. Um, if you have any any questions, I'll put my email address in into the chat. And uh, if you uh, want to get in touch on uh, the adapt uh, to uh, tool publishing tool or anything else, just 
shoot us a quick email and sure. we'll be happy to uh, help out. And thanks again, Matt, uh, for thanks hosting again. the webinar and giving us a chance to talk about our two, um, two um, um, yeah, favorite tools within uh, digital learning and uh, to show how we combine those two, two, uh, two together. Well, thanks both for coming. I mean, I obviously love Toto, but love Adapt as well. And it's great to be able to see Adapt being made easier to use in Toto. So that's really great. Thank you both very much for that. Thank you. And thank you to everyone for coming. Thank you so much for joining in. Thank you. Thanks, Alec. I think we'll finish there for today. Bye. Bye. Bye.